Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurtzkazat's videos, specifically this one on how time works and time paradox. And it asks the question, did the future already happen? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. Don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this out. Do your past, present, and future all exist right That's now? Silly. Are you watching this video, being born, and lying on your deathbed at this very moment? Surprisingly, the answer could be yes. I mean, that's possible. The real question is, does it count as Kurtzkazat getting three views or just one? But how can that be? What does that even mean? How does time work? The block universe. Imagine the universe like a child painting pictures on- Ah, uh, the block universe, just like they're saying everything has already happened, past, present, and future, all existing at once. And our whole concept of time flowing is an illusion. This almost seems just as much philosophical as it is based on actual physics. Paper. Each picture shows everything that's happening in it's the universe, universe in a single person. moment. With each new moment, all kinds of things occur everywhere. People are born and die, galactic civilizations expand, you miss the bus. And our universe kid... We go from galactic civilizations to missing the bus, that's pretty funny. ...makes a new picture that replaces the old one. In this way, you get something like a movie. Only the moment we're in right now is real. The past is what happened what before. What the frame rate now of the universe it's gone. Is. The future is still to come and hasn't been drawn yet. This is kind of how time feels, right? Each moment being replaced by the next one. The past is far behind us. The future doesn't exist. But what if time is something else? What if the hmm. universe kid has already finished all its drawings and stacks them on top of each other? Yeah. This way, we get a block. A block of time that contains the whole history of the universe. All moments that have ever existed or will ever exist. But in this block, in this stack of moments, the past, the present and the future are equally real and exist <laughs> at the same time. This feels wrong. The only things that we... I mean, you could just argue it's like a greater, a greater scope way of looking at things. Again, this seems just as much philosophy. Like when you're looking at a, like when you're doing a project retrospective or something like this, you're, that's the goal is to try to see something like this for say when you're building your nuclear power plant, everything you learned as it's, as if it was currently existing right now from site selection, permitting, construction, and operation. Perceive as real are those things happening now. How can the past and future be real right now? The problem is that a co I, so I don't actually have a problem with that part because, I mean, as far as historical stuff, it's like a history, a recollection of a history or a historical event or a memory isn't any less real. I don't know. According to the theory of relativity, they kind of have to be. Heavily simplified, yeah. relativity it's says curvy. that time and space are not separated, but one connected space-time. When you move through space, you're also moving through the block. This means time passes differently for different people, depending on how they move through space relative to each other. And this also means that what, what someone perceives as is now is a certain cut along the block, a cut that will depend on how fast they're moving. So what you think is now is really only your now. There are many different nows in the universe, and sure. all of them are equally real. This also means there's no universal past or future. Okay, this is a lot. Looking at it very simply, and this is more arbitrary, it's, I mean, we already sliced the Earth up into time zones. I mean, imagine when we expand to other planets, both inside and outside of our solar system. Imagine how much jet lag is going to be for that sort of thing. But this sounds weird, but we do this, we do this already with, with time zones, albeit this one's a more extreme version of it, especially when you get into the weird time dilation effects if you happen to be traveling close to the speed of light. How does this work? Imagine three alien spaceships a million light years away. Yeah. The first one just hovers in space, not moving relative to you. You both experience the same me. now, the same present. If you had a magical instantaneous internet connection, you could do a video call right now and chat about alien things. 
instantaneous internet can't exist, but the basic idea is the same. That would be cool. Yeah, I think in I think in Star Wars they have something called the Holonet, which is basically real time galactic communication. It's gonna make things interesting as you know we if we colonize other planets or something. The second spaceship is flying away from us at 30 kilometers a second, about three times faster than a human rocket. It's moving it's definitely still pretty through the block of time than you are, which means I mean, its life. now is different from yours. With the magical internet, the aliens can talk to your ancestors in 1924, when humanity was discovering the first galaxies outside the, the Milky Way. Internet. The third spaceship wants to visit Earth and is flying towards you at 30 kilometers a second, moving at the opposite angle of the second ship through the block of time. It experiences yet another now. With the magical internet, the aliens can talk to your descendants in the, in the future, year 2124, yeah. when humanity has already built cities on Mars and Venus. Okay. <laughs> sure. I like how confidently they said that. It's almost like a uh, self-demonstrating video here because... Kurtz Gazat saw the future that already happened back in 2124 when we colonized Mars and Venus. That's a, that's a pretty clever little joke they did right there. So we have three different nows. So which one is correct? Well, that's the problem. Red but it's, rel it's, cor it's situationally correct if you're talking about relativism, but you could also just say they're all correct. It's just the lens you're looking at, except you're looking at it through time. It's like being at a lighthouse viewing a ship with the naked eye versus with a set of binoculars or something. It's just how you view it. Activity is based on one powerful principle, cosmic democracy. The fact that the point of view of all observers in the universe is equally valid. Cosmic democracy? I've never heard that term before. It just makes me think of the Galactic Senate from Star Wars, and we all know how that turned out. All those nows have to be equally real. But if this is the case, your- I mean, sure, I've just never heard it referred to as that. Past, present, and your future all have to exist at the same time, right now. Because for the different aliens, they all happen in their present. But what is the same time again? This yeah. means that the distinction between the past, the present, and the future is an illusion. The universe is not a bunch of things evolving through time, like in a movie, but a static block in which the past, the present, and the future all coexist and are real. How can that be? Yeah. Well, think about a galaxy outside the observable universe, too far away to ever visit or see. But even if you can't get there and don't see it, it's still real. Right. The future yeah, might be the same. Of reference. But if the past is not far behind us and the future actually exists, then there is no movie. Things don't happen in the universe. The universe just is like a frozen block of dead cosmic ice with everything that will ever happen already written and decided. And now we're getting into something more philosophical, talking about if everything is static and nothing ever moves. It kind of reminds me of there was a Greek philosopher that thought this. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but he argued that change in motion are illusions and that reality is eternal unchanging indivisible that our senses deceive us it was a bit fatalistic though i don't remember if it was more fatalistic or if it's more of like we're also part of that system in a way because we've already made the decisions already at once which if that's indeed the case, Ren, to me it sounds a bit off, but if that's indeed the case, then you shouldn't worry about anything, because everything's already taken care of. <laughs> anyway. Is the future already written? If all times that's coexist what he would argue. and are yeah. equally real, then the future has to be already written. But that's not but how you, make you experience revision? things. <laughs> it feels like you can mold your future with your decisions. It really feels like you're free to choose to stop watching YouTube to not miss the bus. But now who's to say the alternate didn't happen in alternate universes, parallel universes, and everything already did happen? Because know that they just said universe, not multi. If the future is set in stone, you can't decide anything. So are your choices an illusion? Well, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Maybe your free will is a mirage. And maybe a, you missing the bus mirage. was already predetermined at the Big Bang. So feel free to continue watching. Yes, when the universe was formed, it already had in mind that you were going to miss that bus. That's hilarious. Except quantum stuff is ruining everything again. Quantum processes can't be predicted, not even in principle. 
not because we're silly and don't know how to do it. According to quantum physics... But that's just talking about prediction, not, not if something actually happened or not. Because it doesn't matter if you could predict it or not, according to that, that static philosophy. It already happened. You're just incapable of perceiving what happened or forecasting it in the future. Quantum particles are intrinsically random. For example, if you have a radioactive atom, it could decay at any moment, mm -hmm. in the next second or in the next million years. That's true. Everything involving half-lives, radioactivity, it's all a big Monte Carlo simulation on what actually happens. What's interesting is even things that primarily decay by, say, alpha particles, it's possible there for them to have some gammas or some betas or extremely rarely even spontaneous fission, which isn't like fission in a nuclear power plant. It's when a big chunk of it splits off that is not an alpha particle. Those probabilities of those things aren't zero, but for law of averages, for the purpose of simulation, yeah, half-life and saying something decays predominantly alpha or beta, that's, that's pretty standard, but there are some ultra-rare circumstances out there. We can calculate the probability that it will decay tomorrow, but no oracle in the universe will ever be able to tell you with absolute certainty <laughs> if it will do so or not. Unfortunately, nuclear engineers are not oracles of the universe, but man, that would be a cool title. Quantum particles can change the world. Imagine a radioactive element randomly decays and causes a genetic mutation in a nearby mammal. And then many generations later, that mutation has led to a weird mix of duck and mammal that makes no sense. <laughs> so one thing to be clear on radiation-induced mutations, um, greater chance of one, it doing nothing at all. It's just some undetectable mutation effect that didn't do anything. Two, it could just kill the species outright. And then, you know, that, that generation ends. That's a, that's a tail end. But a lot of it is more subtle changes, evolutionary changes over the course of multiple generations. And by the way, radiation isn't the only thing that can cause this. Just uh, different sorts of cell division, other uh, stimuli like intense heat or lack of heat, um, changes, changes in the environment, environmental conditions, which radiation is an environmental condition, but it's not the only one. So don't be thinking that radiation is going to cause mutations and end up with some weird looking animals out there. Or the atom decays a day later and the weird creature will never exist. If quantum stuff is really uncertain, the future can't be set in stone. But if the future is an untold story, that statement right there, if it's the future, if quantum mechanics is uncertain, can it not be set in stone? I actually disagree with that necessarily. I'm, I'm not saying the future is set in stone, but it could be set in stone, but just we can't predict it. There's a difference. I don't think that necessarily invalidates that philosophy, that statement right there. Granted, there's, I know there's other views that kind of what they touched on earlier was with like tiny variations into chaos theory, the more the butterfly effect, the butterfly effect with small changes causing a more cascading effect. And then you get into the whole argument about free will, which is less scientific, definitely more metaphysical, spiritual even. And then into the more open future of like different possible events and like branching paths that again can happen in like parallel universes and stuff. But it's uh it's definitely interesting to wrap your head around or attempt to. I don't I don't claim to fully under, understand any of it. It can't be real in the same way as the past is. So what happens when uncertain things like the decay of our atom become real? Is that moment the present? Is this now? But before we saw that cosmic democracy makes it impossible to define an absolute now. What's going on here? It turns out that for yeah, it's almost like if you're going to look at it through stone, you're like an outside observer. Going back to the example they showed of the kid with the drawing and the cubes, that's like you're something that's outside of this universe just looking in on things. So maybe just from our frame of reference, you just can't tell. Every individual object, you, an alien, an atom, the past, the present, and the future are always well defined. Your death will always happen after your birth, never before, and never at the same time. <laughs> now, sure. you are clearly between your birth and your death. 
So for you at least, now makes perfect sense. If we don't play tricks like going to the other side of the universe and using aliens in funny ways to find out what now means. There you go, yeah. yeah. Using the funny tricks. Then you can see it all set in stone if you are if you get outside of it. Okay. All right, I'll buy that. <laughs> Things again start to look ordered and nice, and individual nows seem to exist. Can we do something with them? Let's return to our block universe. Maybe the block does not contain the future, and maybe we just imagined it wrong. Maybe the block is just the past, and a thin layer on the surface is the present. You would have to have a perfect memory of everything from each and every perspective and planning of the universe, for lack of a better word, because, I mean, whose history book's been 100% accurate? <laughs> There's still debates going on, historical debates going on to this day about, um, say, when the first humans actually showed up. So even trying to say a perfect horizon to look into the past from this thin sheet of paper above this partial cube, still not going to be able to see it. That surface is not smooth, but bumpy and uneven. Okay, it's been made go. by joining countless individual nows, each experienced by someone or something in the universe, each equally real and valid. And all observers and do their bit, backwards so too. cosmic cool. democracy is still true. As new things happen and uncertain things become Cosmic certain, radioactive atoms me. decay, new species of mammals arise, people miss the bus, the border moves upwards, creating new time in the universe. <laughs> Instead cool. of a frozen block of time with a future that has already been written, the block is growing and things happen. You can again decide your future. Maybe leave earlier so you won't miss the bus. Nah. What is real then? Let's recap. We started with time as a movie, one now after another, where only the current now was real. Then we found out that because of relativity, there are multiple nows, all of them real somehow, which could mean that we're living in a frozen block universe where things don't happen and you don't really have free will. And we ended up with a kind of growing block universe where time passes and the future is open. So which is correct? What is real? The present, the past, are the Can you really know for sure? Dinosaurs as real as you are right now. What do the aliens on the other corner of the universe think about all this? <laughs> to be honest, no one knows. What we've learned are two possibilities to describe time, but they're not the only ones. Some scientists yeah, think that the idea more. of now only makes sense near you, but not in the universe as a whole. Others think that time... Now that's... Because of just the time differences of how long it takes for light to go from you to the other bits, that one, yeah, that one makes sense. ...itself doesn't even exist, but the whole way. concept is an illusion of our human mind. That's even more terrifying. And others think that time does exist, but that it's not a fundamental feature of the universe. Rather, time may be something cool that looking. emerges from a not deeper sure level of is, reality. Just cool like looking. heat emerges from the motion of individual molecules, or life emerges from the interactions of lifeless proteins. We could go on, but... That one's I'm a little out there. The Where's the line for life? That one was definitely out there. A lot more philosophical, or maybe you could argue just as much philosophy and physics there. Now, I never claim to be an expert in philosophy, but it's really interesting stuff to think about. Um, this was probably one of the more thought-provoking videos I've reacted to in a while. Please tell me how wrong I am down in the comments, because I'm sure I am. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.